All right, we're back. We're on page 16 of math analysis. Specifically, we're in notes two. Uh, and you might recognize some of this table, but now it's got three extra columns. Um, and this is the table you were supposed to memorize. So let's see if we actually memorized it. So I'm just going to fill it in. Um, you should be able to do this in roughly the same amount of time. Uh, which way do we want to go here? You got to make a choice about how you're going to do it, right? You're going all sines, all cosines, you're going to alternate. Like, what, what's your game plan? Just got to have a plan, stick to it. Okay, so these are values that we memorized. Now, confession, I do not have the next ones memorized. If I need cosecant of something, I actually just think in my head, like, what's the sign? And then I flip it over. What I'm going to do here, actually, I'm literally looking at the box and I'm flipping it over. Now, root two over two, for historical reasons, we're gonna rationalize to root two, uh, the reciprocal of root two over two, I should say, right? So if I do one over root two over two, that's two over root two. I think the easiest thing to do with this is to say that that's root two squared over root two, which is just root two. The alternative is you rationalize, multiply the top and the bottom by root two. Same result, doesn't make a difference, um, but either way. And then this one we don't rationalize, also kind of for historical reasons, but also like, I don't know, two root three over three just looks worse than two divided by root three, which is basically why I don't rationalize. So here, I'm gonna look here, and then I'm gonna do the same, same conventional things. Root what? Root two, and then this will be two, and then here, same idea. So I don't actually have these really memorized, but I mean, like, what's it mean to memorize, you know? Uh, this, we, we rationalize each of them for historical reasons. So uh, these are the values, really memorize sine, cosine, tangent, and then the relationships, and you get the other ones kind of for free, in my opinion. So let's see if we can answer this. All right, there's a key piece of information here. The, prob the lines y equals 3x plus 5, y equals negative x over 2 plus 3, and the x-axis form a triangle. All right, find each of the angles to three decimal places, not a problem. You do not need to find the intersection of the lines. If a problem tells you that, don't waste your time doing it. That's, that's a warning, right? So let's see if we can actually do this. I'm going to graph y equals 3x plus 5. Try to do that correctly there. And then I, I can't go like over one and up three. So I'm going to go back one and down three, which should take me here. Okay. And then let's do a line through that and then to the axis because we need that. So let's do that. And then uh, I also need three and then down one over two. But then if I go down one over two again and down one over two again, I actually get to six. Or I could have just like said equal to zero and solved. Either way, perfectly good. Um, so let's draw this line. But this line, okay, so I'll start here. And then let this be my, let, you know, let the computer do its thing. Let the iPad do its thing. Let the app work. Uh, and then here, turn that into a line. That's pretty nice. Pers a person could get used to that. All right, so we got three angles that we need to deal with. So the three angles of the triangle are this angle, um, this angle, and then this angle. All right, so I need to find those. Well, it occurs to me that, I mean, I could do a lot of things. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to look at different triangles. I'm not actually going to solve the problem that I was asked to solve. Sometimes this is the way to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this triangle and see if I can find the blue angle based on that triangle. And then I'm going to look at this triangle well, that's confusing. How it like do it, it went straight over the other one. Didn't really know that would happen. I'm gonna use that and try to find the purple angle. So let's call that, uh, I'm gonna call the purple angle B and then call the blue angle A. 
just just because it was first um, and see if I can do that. And then I will find the third angle, which I'm going to call C. Um, I'm going to find that by by using the fact that three angles have to add up to 180 in a triangle. Um, so let's see if we can do this. All right. Um, I think that angle B is maybe the easiest one to find because uh, this section here, segment rather, is six. And this segment, which is, you know, the side of the triangle is three, which means that the tangent of B opposite over adjacent is three over six. So the tangent of B is three over six, which means B should be the inverse tangent of one half. Okay, that seems good, right? I mean, I didn't get a decimal yet, but that, that seems plausible. All right, let's look at A. So in this triangle, I don't really know what this is. I mean, I, I'm confident that we could find it, but is there a better way? I think there is. So let's think about this. What if instead, let's go across here. And then, uh, so I did that specifically at that point that I had used, right? Because to get to that point, I went back one and down three, which means that this is one. And then this segment must be three which means that this angle we can find because we know the tangent of that angle. Now, the real question at this point is why is that angle the same as angle A? Well, do you see parallel lines cut by a transversal? Corresponding angles are congruent. Look at that, a little bit of geometry there. So this is also angle A. So we know from the little triangle inside the little triangle that the tangent of A is three over one or three, which means that A is the inverse tangent of three. Okay, so, so far we got that. Now, I don't wanna say a lot about it, but I do wanna point out, if you look at our lines, look at this, and then look at that slope. Look at those two slopes, and look at the inverse tangents that we're doing. Is it maybe possible that inverse tangent and slope are somehow related to each other? Uh, I think that it is possible, and maybe it's totally a thing, but we'll find out later. Uh, so then angle C, which is definitely definitively the worst one to find, um, I'm just going to say C is 180 minus A minus B, and therefore C is 180 minus uh, tan inverse of 3 minus tan inverse of one half. So really, all of this hinges upon uh, us being right. Let's see, we need these three to add up to 180. Um, so let's go to the calculator and see how we did. Uh, all right, so I'm in degree mode and that's good. So I'm gonna do the arctan of three and get a decimal. Well, I mean, I'm getting a decimal. I don't really need one. Uh, arctan of one half. Okay, so let me, I'm supposed to get decimals. It, I just remember that. So let me just write these down. So A is approximately 71.565, 71.565 degrees. And then B, it's like we haven't talked about radians in a little while. I mean, always be thinking of radians. B is 26.565. And then, so C is gonna be 180 minus those. So let me, Let's do that. Let's do 180 minus, so 180 because uh, a triangle adds up to 180. This 81.8, ooh, 699. So when you round, you get 81.870. That's my least favorite. Uh, 81.870 degrees. All right, let's just make sure that um, if I do the arctan of three, plus the arctan of one half, and then plus, I mean, this is like really weird what I'm writing, because uh, like pretty obviously these are gonna add up to 180. This is not really an effective check, uh, but this is, this is essentially what we're saying, but I mean like, look at it. 
look at it, it's obviously true. I mean, I just added and then subtracted arctans. Um, so you definitely get 180. So that's, that's not a useful check. Um, but it's true. I mean, at least it worked. If it hadn't worked, we would know that we were totally wrong. Let's go back to the notes um, and just look at it one more time. So the key thing here is you didn't need to find the intersection point. You actually didn't need to find the one X intercept. All that I did was I basically used the slopes that I had and I realized that slopes can give me opposites and adjacents, delta y's over delta x's. And then I would know my angles because I can use inverse tangent. So a lot of connections there and you, you really need to think about it. This table you really need to memorize. And I'm gonna stop the video here, come back in the next video and do a little bit more. So I will see you there.